to another town administrator's update. It's a monthly segment where we have uh, town administrator Paul Sagarino come in, sort of give us a little bit of a, you know an update, as the name implies, about what's going on around town. Uh, Paul, thanks for coming in. Hey, thanks for having me, Rich. So we have just wrapped up January town meeting. Another one, another one in the bag. Um, so a couple of the things that were kind of big was, um, I think probably the, the largest discussion was around the zoning change. Mm -hmm. You want to talk a little bit about that? I know it's more the, you know, it's from the planning department, and we had Kristen in for a different show talking about it in depth. But kind of the highlights. Yeah, I mean that's a, it was a great initiative put forth by our planning department and developers in town. Uh, as everybody's aware, we're, we're very interested in attracting more life science businesses uh, to the community to diversify our tax base. Um, the selectmen voted overwhelmingly 5-0 to support this initiative um, for the economic development benefits of it. Mm -hmm. And we're really hopeful um, that we're going to become a real player in the life sciences market and attract some of these pharmaceuticals and labs and, and manufacturing type um, businesses to the town. Yeah, so what it did was, you know, just to like, give people who hadn't been paying too close attention, it kind of changed like this, the requirements for a certain type of zoning, the high-rise industrial, Yep. Um, to allow, th at least at this, at this point, three more sites to be kind of labeled as industrial high-rise and make it a little bit, you know, easier for them to meet that criteria. Yep, and I think some of the things they did was to lower the height requirement because we don't really need uh, tall buildings there right. and um, both all three of those sites have really good visibility from the highway uh, which is something we're told these type of companies are looking for yeah, uh, not on an ego basis but I think you know hey look we're here we made it we're you know we got our logo prominently displayed on 128 sure. um, and again the the lab type businesses typically attract uh, less employees, so typically have a lesser of an impact on the traffic we have in town and you know, high paying jobs and there's a huge booming industry here in Massachusetts and, and we would really like to capture some of that. Um, Kendall Square is obviously the hub of it. Uh, it's a very expensive place to be, and we're just we're hoping to attract some of those businesses from that area to, to, to experience all of the amenities that we have to offer here in Burlington. You know, we have a great uh, mix of amenities. We have great businesses in town already, and we feel that we have a lot to offer these, these businesses. Absolutely. And yeah, so this is, again, making it easier for them to come here and sort of, you know, get through the process of, you know, going through the, yeah, the town th process. The so. important thing is that as of right, um, these companies want to move at the speed of light. So it's very important to them to know that they're not going to get caught in a long, dragged out process and then find out that the town doesn't want them to come. Right. A lot of times they want to pick a site and be in there in about a year, we're being told. So um, a, lot, a lot of the zoning changes will allow that certainty so that they know that we, we already approve of these type of businesses on those sites. So. And another thing, it was more of an update, um, but I, well, and an approval, but the, there was a grant that was given to the town for its new rideshare service program that is replacing the B-Line. Yep, um, as everybody knows, um, the B-Line will be discontinued on June 30th. Um, we're, look, we're currently running a pilot program. Um, it's a lift type service, curb to curb. Um, kudos to Marge McDonald, John Sanchez, and Whitney Haskell from the town who have been working on this initiative. Uh, we're able to get a $75,000 grant from the state to help us with the pilot pilot program. And we're really, we're really excited about this. We really feel as though we're going to be able to serve uh, more folks than the Beeline was able to serve. And again, with the curb to curb service, I think that's almost even better, a yeah. better enhanced level of service. Um, there's no question it's going to take some getting used to. It's different from just running down and hopping on a bus. But I think once people sort of get the hang of it, I, I really, I'm very, uh, hopeful that they're really going to like it. So Right. And you mentioned Marge McDonald from the uh, Council on Aging. She made mention that there will be educational programming to mm -hmm. help people make that transition from you know, the B-Line to this new service. Yep. And you know, as most people who have used an Uber or Lyft type service know, it's a smartphone app. Um, but we've currently set up a program because you know, one of the populations we hope to serve a lot is um, those over 55 mm -hmm. and seniors, and we're, we're aware that a lot of folks like that, if you have parents, you know that they're not that great on cell phones and apps and things of that nature. So 
There's a concierge service that's set up alongside of this. So if you're not a tech or a cell phone type person, you can use a telephone and they'll call in and they'll arrange the ride for you in, in a similar manner to how someone might do it on an app. So Right, and that's the uh, GoGo grandparent. Service. Correct. So that was, you know, some of the big things from this town meeting. And now, you know, as everybody knows, we're looking towards the next town meeting. Um, it's never too early to talk about the, the May budget season. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that process has already you know, start gotten underway with discussions with Ways and Means. So what are some of the kind of you know, FY21 now budget guidelines that you guys are looking at? You know, I know it's mm -hmm. early, but kind of where, where are you sort of trying to start from? Yep, um, we had our budget guideline meetings. We had a very uh, vigorous discussion with uh, other elected officials and members of the administration. Uh, we ultimately agreed upon a 3.5% operating budget guideline, uh, which would be blended between the town and the schools. Uh, typically, that would mean that the town side of, would, of government would sort of fall around three and a quarter, and, and the schools would end up with 3.75. Um, it's a challenging guideline to meet, but uh, you know I think it's a, it, it's it's definitely a very generous one. Um, our our demands, as as everybody knows, we offer an outstanding level of services at the town in the school here in town and I think that our budgets are driven by residents wants and desires for services as well as you know state mandates and other things like mm -hmm. that so you know the guideline discussion is again it's it's a it's an agreement between a bunch of different people so that we can sort of come together a town meeting with an approved plan that we all sort of agree agree upon and to eliminate any confusion and again it's just that it's a discussion there's no one person that's in charge of it it's sort of mutual agreement so that we can sort of um, come to town meeting with a cohesive plan that makes sense and that the town can afford yeah and it's uh, from our previous discussion I understand that it's you know it's a balancing act you want to make sure you're covering and providing those services you mentioned without you know, having a budget that increases taxes too much. Yep, it's always a, a primary concern um, is mitigating the impact on the residents. Um, the current three and a half percent operating budget guideline may result in a tax levy overall increase of close to five percent to fund that. That's typically not out of whack with what other communities do on an annual basis. Um, it's a little higher than what we've typically done here in Burlington. Uh, but that doesn't translate into a 5% increase to the residents. Right. Uh, because we have uh, such a large commercial sector, the residents typically will, on the average single family, will result in a much smaller increase, you know, probably in the, the 3 to 3.5 to 4% range. So, um, again, if that's the bill on your table, that's a difficult bill. So we certainly don't um, take... You know, the affordability to the residents, we don't take that lightly. It's a very difficult balance and act between trying to uh, manage the level of services that our residents demand, as well as trying to keep it affordable for everybody. Um, now, one thing, you know, without getting into the debate of it, um, that has just been a topic of discussion both at the Board of Selectmen's meeting and then in town meeting is uh, this monument, freestanding monument sign that's going, mm -hmm. that was been approved to go on a piece of town land for the shops at Simons Park project. Just sort of talk a little bit about how this came about. Yep, um, I believe the de developer approach to town, this project uh, started before I, I assumed right. uh, my position. Um, as you know, it was a split vote, even at the Board of Selectmen, 3-2, and <clears throat> What um, the action does is the, the Board of Selectmen voted to license uh, a portion of town property in front of the shops at Simons uh, for, the, for the erection of a, a monument sign uh, to denote the businesses in there. Um, and again, it was a 3-2 vote. I think um, the Selectmen that voted against sort of didn't like the process. I mean, typically signage is covered uh, by the planning, planning board or the ZBA. And uh, because this land is unzoned, it right. falls under the jurisdiction of the Board of Selectmen. So I would say the two dissenting votes um, essentially didn't like the, the way that the project came through um, as opposed to the sign. And uh, I can tell you that the, the three Selectmen that voted in favor were genuinely concerned about um, the shops at Simons and their ability to have a sign to attract um, quality tenants to the, to the location. So I know it's a pretty controversial decision. Um, 
you know, that's what town, that, that's what make local government go around. We have a lot of different sure. people, a lot of different opinions, and, uh, you know, uh, sometimes it's a challenge, but I think at the end of the day, uh, hopefully we end up with a better product or a better product going forward uh, because we're taking in all that feedback. Yeah, and they did put some restriction on it, like no logos, but just the names, kind of keep it as easy to read as possible. Yeah, and Rich, I can tell you, you know, everybody has a different opinion on what's a good looking sign. Um, sure. So if you asked 100 different people, you'd probably get 80 different opinions on a particular sign. So that that's the challenging part about anything visual like that. And, right. um, you know, I know we're, we're sorry that it caused, causing, causing some people so much angst um, over the sign. And again, it, was, it wasn't an easy decision for the board. Um, but again, I think that they had some real concerns about um, that shopping center in, in the center of town and ability to attract quality tenants that we, we would like to see in the center of our town. Yeah, I mean, that was what the developer said. It was an important part of their, you know, getting, you know, leasing out for tenants. So, and the town does make money off of it. You know. Yep, um, as it's a license of town property, I, I believe the sum of money over the 20 years is close to $430,000 total. So um, again, it, w it wasn't done sort of for the profit. I mean, that anytime you're, well, you're using, sure. using town, town property, you know, the residents deserve a feedback for that. Um, but at the same time, you know, it's a, a side benefit of, of the site. Right. Um, one of the last things I want to get into is um, you have started a search committee for the uh, treasurer uh, tax collector position. Yep. Uh, just talk about some of the timeline on that and sort of what the committee, you know, where, how it's going to work, how it's gonna, what, what the plan is. Yep, the process will be um, driven by Joanne Faust, uh, our HR director, and she's done a great job on similar type searches as this. Um, as the town is aware, uh, Brian Curtin will be retiring on June 30th, so um, we're ready to start the search for his replacement. Uh, the Board of Selectmen uh, appointed a committee. Um, a lot of financial folks on there, the financial department heads, um, as well as um, members from the, a member from the Ways and Means Committee. And that, that project is just about getting started up. Uh, the ad has been posted. Um, and we'll be getting the committee together. And we'll try to get the committee to uh, put together a couple of candidates for the selectmen to, to, to choose from. Um, and it's worked very successfully. Uh, and I searched to replace myself uh, as the finance person. That's how we ended up with John Denizio. Uh, Joanne recently did a great job on the economic development developer search. So uh, we have a lot of uh, faith that this process is going to bring us some really good candidates. Yeah, and I mean, as we've seen in the past, I mean, just the town of Burlington attracts quality people. So. We do. This, this is a place we have a lot of activity. We have a lot going on, and I think that's attractive to to many people. Um, it is turning into a difficult situation out there where, you know, municipalities, there's a lot of people retiring. Uh, there's a shortage of qualified people out there for a lot of, a lot of positions. Uh, so far, we've been very fortunate to be able to sort of um, beat the odds and continue to get good candidates, but it is something that concerns me in the future. Uh, there's less qualified people out there to go around, and every year that goes by, more and more folks are retiring, so there's less people with experience to choose from. And again, that's what concerns me is, this isn't really a learning kind of place. This is a place where you sort of need to know what you're doing. Right. Again, we have a lot of activity going on. It's not really a place where you can sort of bring someone that doesn't know what they're doing here and sort of train them on it. They sort of have to have a real good idea so they can hit the ground running. Perfect. All right, well, we'll keep uh, you know following that and look forward to meeting the candidates once you have them. All right, well, that's all the uh, questions that I had for you this month. So I want to thank you once again for coming down and you know, spending some time with us. Uh, it's my pleasure, Rich. Thanks for having me. Of course.